someone who's considering trying to go to dentistry for money, ee, you might want to look somewhere else because you're going to have school loans. I want to know a little bit about student loans. Oh. <laughs> so I think I want to start. Student loans is a big topic. Oh, yeah. And for, for sure. those of you that are not dentists watching the channel, student loans for dental school can be anywhere between 300000 to 500, 600,000. And if you specialize, it can go upwards of a million dollars. So it's a big mm -hmm. topic in dentistry. Um, so why don't we start, general. why don't we start with this? Um, what's the biggest amount of student loans that you've heard from one of your friends who was willing Colleagues, to share? Upwards to about a million. And that so. includes undergrad, you know, um, dental school. And then on top of that, specializing. So that all adds up. So you're looking at towards closer to a million. You know, maybe in the 900s, 900,000, but still, that is pretty significant. What, do you, what would you say for your school out of state, what is the average student loans? Okay, so some people are, so the way to look at this is, you know, if you're trying to go to dental school, try to get in state. It's my number one advice because then Definitely. You, uh, the school loans won't be as much because you're an in-state tuition and, you know, you're a resident. Now, I went to Indiana University, so technically that is out of state. Technically, it is out of state. Um, I could apply for in-state tuition, but I would have to live there for two years. And then by the third and fourth year, then I could apply for in-state tuition. I knew I was coming back home, so even then, there's still certain requirements which I didn't get too far into because I knew I was leaving to go back home. So then that was pretty much at the question. Um, but don't quote me on that. I am so all I know is there's some rec or some qualifications are for you to get in-state tuition. So, for example, and this is you know every year out-of-state tuition, ninety grand. Ninety grand. Ninety grand. You know, 90 grand includes, you know, the max. So that's 90 grand max for school, you know, and then for living expenses. Oh, so it includes living expenses. It includes living, so they give you a little bit more. So, so you get a little bit. So I get a little bit. Yeah, at least you're, uh, you got a place to so stay. Like, so, like, for example, it was 90 grand a year. And then that, from what I remember from, like, living there, let's say $2,000 a month rent, food on the low end, just trying to live. It's $2,000 a month. So you're looking at, what, 24 Twenty-four thousand. So, tuition can be more or less between the seventy and eighty, but then when you factor everything else of like, hey, I'm not working, I'm just going to school. Yeah. Where's my income coming from? Yeah. How to pay for rent? Yeah. I had to take the school loan out. So. So it's about you're saying about three hundred sixty thousand, around three hundred sixty. Yeah. Let's just say four hundred. Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. So let's say a hundred thousand per year. And and what. Uh, for those of you that are interested in, in applying to dental school, what is the interest rate like? You know, the government, obviously, when, when you apply, you just want to get in, but you need to right. be considering um, the type of interest. So, what I mean, I know when we had our, our student loans, it's mm -hmm. around, you know, 5 to 7%, right. or maybe even 8% at times, which is extremely high. So, oh, yeah. is that similar for So, you? mine was about 6%, yeah. you know, and I took the max out. So, I took out whatever they could offer me because I needed to, you know, housing. I wasn't yeah. working. Um, and I just focused on school. And at that point, that's all you want to do is focus on school because if you're trying to do work and school, I've seen it done. But for me, I just like, you know, what? I, couldn't I, do it. I got into school, you know, and they they took me like, I'm going to give it all. I'm going to go all in and be like, look, you have my attention. You know, I'm going to study, study my ass off. And then that's where all my time and energy was spent. Yeah. I was going to school. And the loans at that time, I didn't really care. I was like, you know what? Whatever. I know it's worth it. For me, you know, it was worth taking the loan out because I love what I'm doing. I don't regret it. But also at the end of the day, that's a lot of money. So for someone who's considering trying to go to dentistry for money, ee, you might want to look somewhere else because... You're going to have school loans unless you're well off and, you know, you can afford, you know, if you can get it paid off grants, loans, just ways for it to get paid. But just realize, and understand that you will be in debt. So just to give me give you my perspective, um, 
I don't know a lot about what the school student loans are. Right. But, you know, I went to UCLA School of Dentistry, and I think it was around maybe around like 260 or or a little bit higher for student student loans probably for, for probably 280 mm-hmm. or maybe close to 300 probably close to 300 actually um but the let's say USC which is a private school the average debt was around 500,000 mhm so dental school is a lot of money and it's something that i think more people need to be aware of, aware of yeah. before they start and i know that when i first applied you know, I was debating between a variety of schools. One was Tufts, and Tufts is a an, another expensive out-of-state tuition. Mm-hmm. It can be very expensive, and you have to think about how are you going to pay this off. I think the average um, dentist, what does the average dentist make? I, what is it, around one? Okay, so I know two numbers. In the country, I'm at 185,000, 185,000. That's average. I thought it was lower, actually. Now, for California, you're looking at like 120. You're kidding. 125,000. So California. And for me, it's even less. less. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're competing. You know, you're taxed. You know how you like. You know, you're blessed to live in San Diego, so that's where most of your money goes to. It's just trying to live here. So you're saying we're working in an area that has more competition. Exactly, because everyone wants to live here. Because hey, and we're making there's only money. one season. <laughs> Only one season in the summer, yeah. or the summer, and the whole year, you know, and everyone wants to live here. So you're dealing with saturation. And when there's dentists, you know, two to three, a few dentists for every block or every radius, you're competing with them. So, yes, that is a risk you're going to take. So um, so going on with the theme of this le- this podcast, I guess, <laughs> lecture, mm-hmm. um, about practice ownership, right? you know, you have this huge amount of loans, this burden that's on you that some people aren't lucky to have maybe help from their parents right. or they have um, able to refinance their loans. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you do that? Would, would the banks have, did the banks question you? Cause I'm assuming the practice was somewhere around one, 200,000, whatever to purchase. Right. So how my, do you get that money? So the good thing about dentistry is everyone needs a dentist. So that business you know, no one, there's going to be no shortage of. So if you're trying to get a loan, businesses love giving money to dentists because they know at the end of the day. I heard it has the lowest, um, what is it, um, failure rate. Exactly. Or, or what's it called? Ah, um, oh, I wish I knew more about finances. Uh, lo- like uh, not being able to pay back the, right, to pay uh, back the, the loans. banks. Yeah. Now, it's a lot of money. You know, and at the end of the day, what other profession where you can get at least 30% of what you're earning you know look at restaurants i know restaurants you're probably getting between two to five percent of what you're um taking in you know for overall for gross and then when you net or your actual profit is at one two percent and dentistry it's upwards of to about 30 percent so dentistry does have the money now it's up to you as a business owner which they don't teach you in dental school is how to successfully run a business so that's where okay Efficiency. Have a good plan, efficiency, and not this paying, is how I'm yeah. going to pay off my loans. Yeah. So, live well beyond below your means. I'm not ashamed to say this. I still live at home with my parents. You know, I mean, I still sure. drive my car from high school. Yeah, I still <laughs> 98 Forerunner is what I have. You know, so you like, know, yeah. it's you have to know. Okay, I knew when I got. Could I have bought a house? Yeah, with what I got for that loan, for sure. In San Diego, yeah, but. I leverage my student loans, right, to get the practice. And that's that's the good thing about having student loans is because they know in dentistry you're going to pay it off. Now, when you get to the business, it's up to you as an owner to make it work. And that's where – and this is where the beauty of ownership comes from. You can make as much money as you want or as little money as you want. As you, want. you practice style the way you want. You know, yeah. you can run a business and make money. For profit, sure. I've seen plenty of offices around here do that. Or, you know, be comfortable with one practice, you know, and do significantly well. Okay, like, great. So now the loans is going to be an issue. And like I said, where that comes into play is now a lot of new grads, like myself, you know, thought about doing corporate because, A, experience, you know, you get the repetition, and then they pay you well. 
but you're also there's a ceiling gap there's a gap for you for when you do corporate so you know you could probably make 300,000 great if it's corporate for you great 200,000 based on production but if you want to make more than that and have the freedom to like hey next weekend you know what I'm gonna take the weekend off and go to Hawaii or whatever you want to do you have that freedom as a practice owner but you have incredible amount of stress exactly you have to manage an abundance of people it's not, not hard. only managing people that your staff uh-huh. but you have to provide excellent patient care mm-hmm. and make sure that everyone's being being taken care of yeah and it's you know it's not and, hard it's and not hard. yeah so you think it's not hard or you mean or oh it it's hard? i mean hard yeah it's hard difficult that's what i meant yeah. because dude anyone can go out there ask for a loan and run a business what they don't teach you in dental school is hey let me let me look at this PL profits and loss statement you know okay where's my cash flow coming in can i make my overhead and overhead is always gonna be fixed so you gotta make that first or else next month you're like shit i'm gonna be in the red how do i how do i make up for that and then pay for next month's rent and you know, that is where you know the business aspect of it comes from and it, at the end of the day it's like you know you do the dentistry you know as long as you're taking care of your patients you treat them nice treat them well but also there's the business part to it so yeah. there's a little bit of sales and i know dentists don't like that word but it's part of dentistry it's like how do you get well the how do you guess? look at the way i look at dentistry is number one priority is taking care of your patient mm-hmm and I don't think about selling a product. I think about making sure that they're maintaining their health and doing what they need, what needs to be done. Right. So if there's a tooth that's broken down, you can either do a crown mm-hmm. or a filling, or you could wait till something worse happens right. and they may need a root canal or they may need an extraction. So the way I look at dentistry is educating. And that's mm-hmm. prime, one of the primary reasons why I created this channel was not, not only to talk to other dentists, but it's also to talk right. to patients and educate them as much as we can. And I think if you educate your patients and you tell them about the importance of their oral hygiene, then they're less likely to, there's less likely to see these catastrophic failures mm-hmm. where a tooth breaks and right. then you have to take out the tooth. And right. guess what? Now you have to place an implant, which is double the cost of a filling. And then they have to do all this other stuff. So I think a lot of dentists... You know, when you touch on this topic of sales and dentistry, you're right. Not no no dentist wants to talk about it, mm-hmm. and I don't think we need to look at it as sales necessarily. Right. But more look at it as treating our patients, making sure that they understand the consequences and the benefits of doing the treatment that is needed. Right. What do you think about that? So, let me just backtrack real quick. You said something about product. The product is you. So from the moment that the patient meets you to the chair to the way that you you put a rubber dam on, right? To the, hey, I'm going to put my video record and, you know, share this process, you know, to educating. That is your product. The patient is going to buy that product. Not just like, oh, do I know if his filling is good or not? Probably not because the patients don't know what good dentistry is. It's more of from... The phone call to the first step in to, you know, Dr. Sammy remembers, like, my kid's birthday. All right. Oh, he called me after that extraction. You know, like, shoot. And I have his personal phone number. Care. Exactly. All comes that, out of care. That is your product. Yeah. So some doctors, yes, you know, sales, whatever. I view it as, okay, so money, yes, is an issue. You know, some doctors get scared of talking money, big value. There has to be a little mind shift here, you know. If you can't keep your lights on, how are you going to do the best care you can for these patients? So there has to be some part of like, hey, you know what? This is dentistry. There is quote-unquote sales. But I view sales as, you know what? Dr. Sammy says I need a crown. I'm not going to view it as uh, he just wants my money. It's more of like, okay, I need this. Great, he's providing me excellent care. The value is there. Yeah. And the money is flowing, you know, from me, the patient, 
and give it to Dr. Sammy. Yes. Dr. Sammy can then take that money and be like, excellent. You know what? And then and you know what your, that money then, provides for? Exactly. It provides for excellent restorative material. Exactly. It provides for excellent staff who are paid well because mm-hmm. they do they make sure the patient's comfortable when they walk into the room into the exactly. and they're talking and make you feel comfortable before giving an injection. Yeah. Provides for the best restorative material, mm-hmm. which there's some restorative material which is shit. Yeah. And there's material yeah, that dude. you we pay a premium for exactly. so that the filling or crown yeah. or whatever lasts as long as possible. And I think that's where the right. difference is. So this is where exactly. So the difference is if I know I'm giving you money and I see that in return, like man, he's giving me the best care. Patients are going to love that. Now if I give you the money and you sound salesy or sound desperate, patients will sniff that right when they enter the door. So it's an exchange or a flow of like, hey, you know, like money is a means to get excellent care in terms of like, you know, to help you provide the care that I need and to help you do the work that you need to do. Yeah. Um, you know, and as long as you're not flaunting and, you know, if you seem like, you know, the dentist seems shady, you, you may be right because dentistry is all about the human psyche. And if you can read the doctor and feel like he's trying to game you for money chances are it probably is because they can smell desperation from a mile away so it's all about you know the patient the interaction do i trust the doctor if you trust the doctor great so and at the end of the day you know speaking for all doctors i hope you know you know if something goes wrong the doctor makes right you know and then fixes it now if they kind of shove you under the carpet then maybe there's an issue there so yeah i totally agree yeah. so i think um we're approaching the next 20 minutes we set our timers for 18 minutes because we didn't want it to <laughs> well cut off while we're speaking the next topic i want to talk to uh, dr torculus about is going to be um differences between corporate dentistry and mm. a private practice office I think that you do work at one office, which is maybe more of a corporate style, corporate, and yeah. then um, the difference between private. So just to get an idea so that people know what the difference is and what they should expect if there are patients watching this, or if you're a doctor going into um, that scenario, what you should expect. So stay tuned. We're going to check the cameras. Be right back. And I've seen it happen where doctors are like, you know what? They're not paying me for this procedure enough. You know what? Fine. Let me cut this time in half. I can do this filling. In 30 minutes, whatever, let me go on to the next one.